Hey everyone, welcome back to Cloud Consultant YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about hosting um, and attend AI agent applications on, a on AWS. Uh, you must be hearing about the AI buzzword, you know, that uh, how AI is transforming uh, uh, a lot of industries. Uh, so I'm also going to start, I, I, I have been exploring a lot of AI agents, activities, and attend, you know, of, uh, many others. But I found that Anaten is quite uh, uh, flexible, cost effective uh, to do, build a complex uh, workflow or anything. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, purpose of hosting this uh, Anaten on uh, on your own uh, infrastructure is that you get benefit of uh, you know, all, all the features which is there in the paid version of cloud and uh, and and also like you know your data your workflow your uh get recited your own end so yeah so let me go to the next slide where so it would be a production grade architecture so what all the components i'm going to use is like an aws environment i'll be having a private v one vpcs and i'll be using a two uh two az for uh, uh deploying the services so it will be very basic so we'll I'll, I'll have the uh, uh, amazon rds database and uh, i think i i was thinking to have the ready cache but i think uh, it's uh, i'll not be using in this setup but yeah, yeah the for your data layer uh, amazon rds jesus postgres uh, will, will be enough to store all your workflow data and uh, at the app layer, I'll be using the uh, ECS container. Uh, so under the ECS cluster, I'll be using the Fargate uh, where all your NET and app will be getting run over there. And on top, uh, and this will be a scalable, so it will be a behind your auto-scaling group. So it, 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 it will be scaling uh, as per the spike comes uh, uh, on, your, uh, on your app layer, yeah. Uh, it will be getting published over the load balancer um, and the DNS will be getting mounted to your Cloudflare. So Cloudflare, the reason behind Cloudflare because it will also give the control of WAF. Uh, the, uh, if you're publishing over the internet, it has to be protected from the DDoS and other, other threat. So yeah, uh, this would be a simple three-tier application. So I'll be just... Uh, setting up so i'll be doing the entire setup for the over the Tera, terraform code so i have already written a terraform and i'll uh, use the terraform module for deploying the entire applications uh, with infrastructure yep uh, let's head back to your demo yeah so i'll be i've already created the terraform codes for uh, uh, setting up the internet infrastructure uh, with container and images, everything. So uh, this one single file will have everything uh, what we have seen, the architecture diagram. So uh, initially we'll have everything where I have, I have just kept a simple, you know, just take this uh, file and you can run it and you can get your application up and running. So uh, initially I have kept as a variable. We can also separate this in different, different variables and and we can create a module as well. But to keep it simple, I just created a, a, as a simple setup where it can be uh, run and it can be deployed anytime. Uh, uh, yeah, so the I have certain section creation where I know the first is VPC creation. So network creation will be happening uh, with all the subnet and AG, as I mentioned. So we'll have the NAT gateway. So NAT gateway will also be getting created over there. Uh, we have uh, 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 the NAT gateway association will be also happening to route table. Uh, and then uh, uh, after association, we have a security group. This will be getting used for your load balancer. And we have the security group for the ECS container uh, to authenticate with ALB. Uh, we have uh, the security group for the RDS database so that uh, the container can, uh, the Anaten application can communicate to your database. Uh, we'll have a, a RDS subnet group, which will be a private subnet group uh, where the DB will be running. And this will be uh, uh, the DB creation. So 
uh, it feels free to increase the size based on need but uh, i think initially it's uh, 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 if you're going to only host n and applications uh, on this database uh, t3 micro is enough for us to uh, start with um, yeah uh, then after that we have ecs cluster where the cluster is getting spinned up we have a task uh, definitions where this is the main container definition where uh, we'll be giving that what sort of uh, uh, where you wanted to get deployed so we'll be using a fargate fargate is is a serverless uh, compute where we don't have to bother about infrastructure uh, we just have to give the container image so i'm going to use a official contain uh n -A -N image and the container port will be a 5678 so uh, i'm also passing out the environment and more and environment variable uh, with all the required uh, uh, database uh, endpoint and username password uh yeah uh this is so i'll be setting up the webhook url so what url you want to set up uh so you have to specify the uh, name over there and then and after that i believe we can uh this is for the logging logging of the container logs uh yeah cloud log group will be getting created and then the respective IAM roles are there, which will be uh, which will be uh, getting created for your uh, container uh, permission set. And we have the publishing survey, the load balancer, which get created via using this Terraform code. And we have a target group uh, where your health check is getting mapped. So this one single file uh, will have uh, this is a service we have. will have everything. So your output file. And then now uh, we just have to come here and uh, in fact I have uploaded this code in our github repo I'll just add into a video description so it is easy for you to set up download this code and uh, uh, get the terraform installed in a local system uh, if you have if you don't know the how to install uh, terraform it, the terraform can be installed uh, like if you do install on Windows, so search for that. There's a command that can be used. Uh, uh, yeah, you can follow this tutorial and install on your laptop. Yeah, there's a video for that. Uh, so, so once you have the Terraform, just check the version of your Terraform. It's there, and now I'll be doing. A so the first command is terraform init make sure that you are in the same location where you have your file kept and the second file is something is a provider where i'm going to use a, a, a state file of terraform in s3 bucket in case you do you, if you if you don't want to keep the state file uh, uh, and uh, you're not going to manage the infrastructure of this via terraform uh, even uh, it, uh, I mean, then you can keep it locally, but as for, as for the best practices, uh, you should make sure that you know your state file is getting stored on S3 bucket. And we have your uh, database credentials, and this is for the temporary the, the, all the keys and um, the database the password is being stored over there. So it's an environment variable. So, first command is terraform init, and it will initialize your backend. Now, once it is done, let's terraform. Terraform plan. So I will give my variable file where I have stored the database and uh, uh, an encryption key. So for this is this is just a credential file uh, which we want to pass it. File is equal to.
so in the plan you can see like you know what all things are about to create uh, as per terraform code then after verifying that let's do the terraform at least two to five minutes yeah uh, it will create your respective vpc im role subnet you know all the association of the uh, subnet and then uh, after that it will also create uh, uh, the clusters database so it creation of database also takes some time so uh, yeah let me pause the video for now Back, it will take at least two to five minutes. Yeah, it it took uh, more than five minutes. So uh, since the database launching was creating a lot of time, uh, but yeah, after 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 the command get completed, uh, you will see the output. We have an output. We have uh, uh, the LB DNS name and uh, the rest of the you know private subnet and RDS database subnet uh, RDS uh, URLs and VPC ID. But we are, we generally need a publishing URL that is uh, in this one to access it. So if you want to access, it, uh, uh, you want to access from here outside, uh, it will not because uh, generally it blocks your site uh, because there is no <coughs> there is no uh, HTTPS certificate apply on that. So uh, the next step is to just to copy this uh, URL and go to your Cloudflare and then uh, yeah, I'll just go to my Cloudflare and point that. So we decided to keep the So I will just create the record uh, with, the, with the domain name which we want to publish. So I want want this to be published to agent and the load balancer DNS name we have to copy here. Keep the proxy status as uh, enable so that your firewall policy and everything will get applied on that. Let's give a couple of minutes and then I think we should put agent, <laughs> agent dot services. So I think, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it works so it works uh, nicely. So let me. Let me send my I'll just create the ID so it is like first time sub sign up you have to do with your uh, any 10 application resolve. So this user is going to be owner of the owner of your account. Make sure you, have, you save this credential. Yeah, so one thing is that you can, you'll have to activate the free license key. Uh, so you can just hit on this, you know, and, and you will receive a, a license, community license, which you can apply, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the this section. So, but I can see my, uh, these things are good. I'll just quickly go to and use a setting. So you have to activate activate the license here. So this you will get from your email address. Let me copy from my email. Yeah, um, I think I'm sorry that I, I think we don't need activation key in community plan, community addition plan. In case you want to upgrade to the some different plan to get more additional uh, uh, support, like you know this have authentication or this other thing, I think then it is very useful. Uh, 
but for now i think we we are good uh, we can create our workflow uh, and i think uh, uh, and all the data and all the workflow which will be getting created is self hosted and uh, uh, yeah i think we can just quickly test it out this is yeah so we can create a multiple work yeah, yeah i think this looks good so our uh, feature is been set up properly done i'll just quickly go to aws environment and show you like all the resources uh, so we have Yep, so we can see our uh, the ECS clusters are currently here. Uh, we have our, our database got created, and under the ECS cluster, we'll see that even the containers are getting running here. Apart from this, I think we have also uh, third services that ALB. So ALB was launched for the publishing and applications uh, that we can also go. For. Of container ports so even if your container get restarted uh, with a different ip it will automatically get discovered by your load balancer and uh, so yeah it's very uh, reliable uh, setup so uh, uh, your data is data is getting stored in rds which is a multi az and then uh, even, even the container get crashed uh, you don't have to be worried about your workflow so you can't lose your workflow uh, whatever workflow you want to design on the ai agent it will be getting stored in your database so uh, okay that, yeah, the multiple time you can create the recreate the containers uh, of a different ip it uh, it won't it won't destroy your workflow yeah that's all for today's session thanks thanks for joining uh, we can catch up in next video thank you